Welcome students to MOOC's series of lectures on non-parametric statistical inference. This is lecture number 4. As I said at the end of the last class that today we shall be studying two sample scale problem. So, these are different from the two sample location problems in the sense that here we compare the dispersion of the two data sets instead of the central location namely median. For median we have already seen Wilcoxon rank sum test and Mann Whitney U test which compares the central location of the two distributions. And therefore, if we want to characterize the location problem, we can use a parameter theta and we can say that the location problems can generally be characterized as testing whether f x at x is same as f y at x, where f x is the c d f of x and f y is the c d f of y. Against the alternative f y of x is equal to f x of x minus theta for some theta not equal to 0. So, suppose theta is greater than 0 or say theta is equal to 1. Therefore, the alternative h 1 we are actually looking at whether f y at x is equal to f x at x minus 1. That is we are looking at if there is a shift in the values of y from x and hence this is essentially testing if there is a shift in the distribution of y and that is why this is called a location testing. If the value of theta is less than 0, then we shall feel that the shift has been to the left side. If the value of theta is greater than 0, then the shift is going to be to the right side. Now, we shall explain the scale problem using parameter theta. So, theta greater than 0 implies y is stochastically larger than x that is f y z is less than f x z for all z belonging to R and theta less than 0 implies y is stochastically smaller than x that is f y z is greater than f x z for all z belonging to R. This I have already discussed in one of my earlier lectures. So, I am not going to illustrate this much. So, let us look at the scale problem with an example first. Suppose I have two sets of observed data x is equal to 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 and y is equal to 4, 7, 10, 13 and 16. Note that both of them have the same median namely 10, but the both of them have the same median namely 10, but the spread is different as y is more widely spread than x. You can see that the spread of x is from 6 to 14, but spread of y is from 4 to 16. So, let us plot them. Since x is 6, 8, 0, 12, 14, assuming they have equal probability, so till 6 the value is 0, at 6 there is a jump, then again another jump is at 8, then at 10 and then at 12 and then at 14. So, this red ones is giving me the cumulative distribution of the sample for x observations. 
Similarly, y observation gives me this step function as its CDF. There are jumps at 4, then at 7, then at 10, then at 13 and then at 16 and then it becomes 1. Now, if we look at the two curves, we see that below 10 the g z which is the c d f for y. Let me write it also f y z is equal to g z which is greater than f z which is f x of z. On the other hand, if we look at an arbitrary point say here, we can see that f z that is the c d f for x that is greater than g z. Therefore, we cannot say that x is stochastically larger than y or y is stochastically larger than x. Rather, from here we can see that the value of y is more spread than the value of x. So, this diagram helps us to visualize this. Now, we shall explain the scale problem using parameter theta. So, what we are doing in a scale problem? We consider two independent samples x is equal to x 1, x 2, x m and y is equal to y 1, y 2, y n. So, from continuous distributions f x and f y respectively. Given f x, f y, x and y as above, we want to test if f x x is same as f y of x for all x, which is the null hypothesis against f y of x is equal to f x of x theta, where theta is the perceived scale factor in the distribution of y. Note that theta is not equal to 1 and theta is greater than 0. Do not get confused, greater than 0 may mean theta is less than 1, but greater than 0 or 1 less than theta say less than infinity. That means, theta can be greater than 1 or theta can be less than 1. If theta is greater than 1, then y has a denser spread compared to x. If theta is less than 1, then y has a wider spread in comparison with x. For illustration, in case of parametric testing, the relevant test is called f test. I hope all of you are familiar with the f test, but for example, suppose x 1, x 2, x n are sample of x and y 1, y 2, y m are samples of y. For parametric, the measure of dispersion is equal to variance. All of us know it. Therefore, sample variance of x is equal to sigma x i minus x bar whole square divided by n minus 1. This is the unbiased estimate for the population variance. Similarly, for y it is sigma y i minus y bar whole square divided by m minus 1. Therefore, the ratio of 
a 6 upon a s y is going to be f with n minus 1 comma m minus 1 degrees of freedom. Therefore, when you compare the variances of two continuous distributions in a parametric setup, we use f test for testing the hypothesis whether they are equal or not. So, this same test now we can actually look at it with the help of theta that the f test can be written as what we are doing, you are standardizing y minus mu y that is we are subtracting the mean from the observation and we are looking at the cumulative distribution function. Similarly, corresponding to x we are doing the same thing and we are checking if sigma x by sigma y by which this is the standardization of that one and that is what is called theta x. Then we can see that the f test can be written in the form of f of y minus mu y at x is equal to f of x minus mu x at theta x. Why we have used this particular expression? It is only to correlate it with the non-parametric method and in a non-parametric also the dispersion is defined as spread around the respective medians and the corresponding model is given by f y of minus m y where m y is the median of y is equal to f of x minus m x at theta x where theta is greater than 0. So, this is what we want to test. Now, two things can happen. Case one is that the medians are known. We know the actual median of x and the actual median that is the population median of y. Therefore, when we have the observations x 1, x 2, x m and y 1, y 2, y n, we can subtract the median and we can get from there x i i is equal to x i minus m x and y j prime is equal to y j minus m of y. Thus, the transformed observations are x 1 prime, x 2 prime up to x m prime and y 1 prime, y 2 prime up to y n prime. And we are looking at if the spread of the x i prime and the y i prime are actually following this that f y prime x is same as f x prime theta x. But suppose we do not know the actual medians of the two populations. This is generally true. Hence, often the assumption is made that the two samples are having the same median because if we do not standardize it with respect to the central location, we cannot just measure the dispersion. So, what we assume that, that they have the common median m and then the combined sample arrangement of the unadjusted x and y should still re reflect that dispersion differences. Okay? And therefore, again we go back to the model f y at small x is f x at theta x or not. So, this is little bit of theoretical interpretation to go inside what is happening in a scale problem test. Now, let us look at which tests are available to us for testing such hypothesis. In particular, we shall look at the following four tests, Mood test, Freud Ansari, Bradley test, David Burton test and Sukhatme test, where x is equal to x 1, x 2, x m 
and y is equal to y 1, y 2, y n are the two independent samples. So, this is n. We have already seen that we pull together the two sets of observations and let capital N be m plus n. Consider the ordered combined population, the mean rank is equal to the mean of the first n integers that is n plus 1 by 2. So, if we consider all the x and y observations together and order them, the number of observation is going to be m plus n is equal to capital N. Therefore, the mean is equal to n plus 1 by 2. That is what I have written here. Hence, the deviation of the ith element in the ordered population from the mean rank is going to be i minus n plus 1 by 2. So, this will give us an intuitive feeling of the dispersion, because we are now subtracting the mean to sort of normalize it. Therefore, the we will look at the difference of the rank of the x observations from the mean and if they are very close to the mean, then their sum is going to be smaller. If they are very far from the mean, their sum is going to be larger and from there we shall try to infer about the dispersion of x. Similar thing can be done with respect to dispersion of y. So, let me illustrate that the mood test. The sum of deviations for x, if that is significantly larger than y, then x should have a larger dispersion and vice versa. But the problem is we cannot use it in a straightforward way because the positive and negative deviations cancel each other. So, let me illustrate it. Suppose I have taken m is equal to 4 and n is equal to 4. Both of them are 4. Therefore, the mean rank is going to be 4.5 because n is equal to m plus n is equal to 8 and mean is equal to n plus 1 by 2 is equal to 4.5. Suppose we consider two examples A and B with the following arrangements. A is x y x y x y x y. That means, the first observation is x, second observation is an y, third observation is x, fourth one is y, fifth one is x, sixth one is y, seventh one is x, eighth one is y. This is in the ordered sample. I am not talking about the order in which samples are taken. Therefore, sum of deviations i minus n plus 1 by 2 for y population is 2 minus 4.5 plus 4 minus 4.5 plus 6 minus 4.5 plus 8 minus 4.5 which is, is equal to minus 2.5 minus 0 0.5 plus 1.5 plus 3.5 is equal to 2. Similarly, now consider b is equal to x x y y x y y x. Therefore, what we got smallest one is x, second smallest is x, then y y x y y x. Therefore, rank for the y's are 3, 4, 6, 7. Therefore, the sum of deviations of i minus n plus 1 by 2 is going to be 3 minus 4.5 plus 4 minus 4.5 plus 6 minus 4.5 plus 7 minus 4.5, which is, is equal to minus 1.5 minus 0 0.5 plus 1.5 plus 2.5 and as we can see it is still coming out to be 2. Thus, if this is the ordered sample or this is the ordered sample, 
we get the same value for the dispersion. This happens because the negative values are cancelling against the positive values. But if we look at these two distributions, we can easily see that the Y population has a wider spread in this, whereas in this Y population is very concentrated in a middle part of the sequence of observations. Here it has a much larger spread. So, that is the difference between these two that although that their sum of deviations from the central location is same, actually their spreads are differing. Therefore, instead of simple difference, we consider the square of the difference and their sum and that is the statistic that we are going to use and the corresponding test is called the Moore's test. Therefore, Moore's statistic can be written as M n which is sigma i minus n plus 1 by 2 whole square i is equal to 1 to capital N z i where z i is equal to the indicated variable. We can take it corresponding to x or corresponding to y that is not very important. In this I have taken it corresponding to the x century. Therefore, z i's are going to be 1 if the ith rank element is an x century, z i is going to be 0 otherwise and we are already familiar with this type of thing as in the last class we have seen that this is called a linear rank statistic. Note that the further an element from the central position, the more is its weight in computing the statistic. That is, suppose this is the ordered sample and this is the central location. So, these are distant observations from the central location and these are closer observations from the central location. The weight given is i minus n plus 1 by 2 whole square. Therefore, corresponding to these distant elements, the weight is going to be much more than the corresponding to the elements which are very close to the central location. Now, suppose x is more widely spread than y. Therefore, it is expected that these values are more likely to be from x and these values are more likely to be from y. Therefore, the statistic sigma i minus n plus 1 by 2 whole square times z i will have a high value if x has wider spread than y. Similarly, if x is denser that means, if these values are closer x and the further values of r y, then the value of the statistic m n is going to be small. So, this is the philosophy on which Moods test works. So, when we are rejecting the null hypothesis that is theta is equal to 1 in favor of theta is greater than 1 if the mood statistic m n is greater than some critical value. As we have already seen that it is expected to be greater therefore, if it crosses some threshold then we are going to say that x has a wider spread than y. Similarly, 
if the null hypothesis is theta less than 1, that is x has a denser spread, then the value of m n is smaller than some critical value, which is very obvious. And similarly, we can write that if a alternative is theta is greater than 1, then reject h naught if m n is greater than some critical value at significance level alpha. On the other hand, if alternative is theta less than 1, then reject h naught if m n is less than the critical value at the significance level alpha. Now, note that under the null hypothesis, expected value of m n is equal to m times capital N square minus 1 by 12 and variance of m n is equal to small m small n times n plus 1 into n square minus 4 divided by 180. I shall prove this in my lecture 5 when I shall do some mathematics with linear rank statistic. For the time being, let us assume these two. In particular, if m is equal to a, small m is equal to small n, then the null distribution of capital M n is symmetric about the mean, which is going to be m into n square minus 1 upon 12, which is nothing but n capital N upon 24 into n square minus 1. But if this condition does not hold that small m is equal to small n, then the symmetric property will not hold. So, this is a special case. When m and n tend to be large, then one can as before use normal approximation and by now you already know how to standardize it. It is m n minus the expected value of m n which is small m into n square minus 1 upon 12 divided by the standard deviation of that which is this large expression and that is going to be standard normal. Therefore, the way we have done corresponding to Mann Whitney or Wilcoxon rank some test in a similar way we shall test it from the normal table. We shall check the value and decide whether to accept or reject the null hypothesis. So, that is about the mood test. Let me consider a very similar test which is called Freud, Ansari and Bradley test. So, in the mood test the deviation of each rank from its mean rank was squared to eliminate the problem of positive and negative deviations that they are balancing out each other. This we have already seen, but in Freud and Sari test what we do? Instead of squaring it, we consider the absolute deviation from the central location. Therefore, the corresponding statistic is called a n, which is now you look at it, it is the mod value of i minus n plus 1 by 2. It is the absolute deviation from the central value multiplied by the z i, which is the indicator variable. So, that is going to be the statistic for Freud and Sari test. Now, this can be written if we take out capital N plus 1 as common, then we can write it as i upon N plus 1 minus half multiplied by the indicator variable. That is z i is equal to 1 if the ith rank element is an x entry and it is 0 if the ith rank element is from y. So, same principle has been used in designing several statistic, but in some sense these are equivalent. However, there are subtle differences which is worth studying because to understand how these people have thought about making their non-parametric tests based on only a few samples. So, the intuition for Freund and Sari test is that 
the smallest and the largest elements of the combined sample are assigned the smallest weight 1. So, if we consider these to be the ordered sample and suppose this is the mean n plus 1 by 2, if this is the smallest and this is the largest element in the order sample, they are going to be given the value 1, the weight. Suppose this is the second smallest, this is the second largest, they are going to be given the values 2. Similarly, if this is the third one and this is the third one, then they are going to be given the values 3. As we come to the center, if n is even, the two middle elements get the weight n by 2, which is very clear, while if n is odd, the single middle element gets the weight n plus 1 by 2. So, all the values are given numeric integer weight. The difference from Moore's test is that in Moods test, the elements which are farthest from the central location have been given maximum weights and that was decreasing as you are coming to the center. But in front answer test, the maximum value is given to the central elements and as we go towards the ends, we can see that weights are decreasing. What is the effect? The effect is that it is because it is opposite to Moore's test, a small value of the statistic would suggest that there is a larger dispersion for x. Because if x is having larger dispersion, then these values are more likely to be coming from x and these values are more likely to be coming from y. And as a consequence, the weighted sum of the x values is going to be smaller. Hence, the smaller value of the statistic would suggest that x values are more dispersed in comparison with y. Now, the statistic is n plus 1 by 2 minus modulus of i minus n plus 1 by 2 whole thing multiplied by z i. Therefore, you understand that for the extreme values, this is high and therefore, as I am subtracting it from n plus 1 by 2, this value is going to be small. On the other hand, for the central values, suppose it is odd, then the most central value, the i is going to be n plus 1 by 2, therefore, this whole thing is going to be 0 and therefore, the, it will get the weight n plus 1 by 2. I hope the concept is clear. Now, let us simplify it. So, let us write it as n plus 1 by 2 times z i minus a n because this is the element we have already computed to be a n is equal to m times n plus 1 by 2 minus a n. Why? Because n plus 1 by 2 we can take out of the summation and z i will be 1 only for m of them which are coming from x. Thus, this sum is going to be m into n plus 1 by 2. Now, we further simplify it in the following way. Consider n is odd. Therefore, n plus 1 by 2 is an integer. Therefore, for i less than equal to n plus 1 by 2, this entire quantity we can write it as n plus 1 by 2 minus because i is less than n plus 1 by 2. So, this is going to be negative of that one therefore, minus i plus n plus 1 by 2 which is, is equal to i, but if i is greater than n plus 1 by 2 then this quantity is positive the absolute value will not change any sign. Therefore, this is written as n plus 1 by 2 minus i minus n plus 1 by 2, which comes out to be 
n minus i plus 1. Thus, if i is less than equal to n plus 1 by 2, then we can simplify it to i. If i is greater than n plus 1 by 2, then this is equal to n minus i plus 1. Therefore, the statistic can be written as i is equal to 1 to n plus 1 by 2 i times z i plus i is equal to n plus 1 by 2 plus 1 to n n minus i plus 1 times z i. This is when n is odd, but if n is even then n plus 1 by 2 is not an integer. Therefore, we have to consider equality in both the cases and we are going to take the floor function and in a very similar way we can see that for i less than equal to the floor of n plus 1 by 2 we get the value i and i greater than equal to the floor value of n plus 1 by 2 we get n minus i plus 1. Therefore, the Freud answer is statistic for n is even is equal to f n is equal to i is equal to 1 to n plus 1 by 2 floor summation of i star z i plus i is equal to n plus 1 by 2 plus 1 to n n minus i plus 1 times z i. So, that is the statistic when n is even. So, apparently there is a small difference between the two statistic. Here it is like this, but in case of even it is slightly more complicated because of the four function, but we notice that when n is odd n plus 1 by 2 is same as the floor of n plus 1 by 2. Therefore, we can write both odd and even by a single function f n is equal to 1 to floor of n plus 1 by 2 i times z i plus i is equal to floor of n plus 1 by 2 plus 1 to n n minus i plus 1 star z i. So, this is what the Freud and sorry statistic which is used for measuring or the comparing the dispersion between the two populations. So, the rejection region for the null hypothesis is as follows. If the alternative is h 1 is that theta is greater than 1 that is y has a denser spread than x then the value of f n is smaller than some critical value because we have said it is going to be opposite of the moods test. On the other hand if the alternative is that h 1 is theta less than 1 that is y has a wider spread than x the value of f n is going to be greater than some critical value. Let me talk about another test of very similar nature which is called the David Burton test. It is also very very similar to the Freud answer test, but there is a subtle difference. Here the weights are given starting from the middle with 1 and as it goes further to the end then the weights are increasing. So, the middle weights are going to be 1, but weights is going to increase as we are going further from the central region. Therefore, what is going to happen? Everything will remain the same, but it will alter the rejection criteria. What is going to happen? If y has a denser spread than x that is theta is greater than 1, then the rejection criteria is going to be the value of statistic is greater than the critical value. And similarly, if the alternative is y has a wider spread than x that is theta is less than 1, then the condition is going to be b n is less than some 
critical value. So, let me illustrate the above algorithms with an example. Consider the following data from two independent samples. So, there are three observations from x and three observations from y and we want to check if both of them have the same spread that is the theta is equal to 1 that is our null hypothesis and our alternative is theta is greater than 1. Why? Because if we look at this we feel that x has more spread it is going from 2 to 4.2 on the other hand the spread of y is less therefore, the valid alternative to test is whether x has a wider spread than y or not. So, what we do we pull together all the observations and make a sorted array of the complete population. In this now we obtain the rank of the x observations therefore, we get x are 1, 2 and fifth position in the sorted array. Now, note that here m is equal to n is equal to 3 because number of observations for both x and y is 3 therefore, total number of observations is 6. Let us first apply mood test. What we are doing? First we obtain the value of the mean rank which we know is equal to n plus 1 by 2 is equal to 3.5. The observed value of the m n the statistic is going to be the sum of square of deviations of the sample ranks with respect to x from the mean rank. Mean rank is 3.5 and for x the sample ranks are 1, 2, and 5. Therefore, the value of m n is equal to 1 minus 3.5 that is 2.5 square 2 minus 3.5 that is 1.5 square and 5 minus 3.5 which is again 1.5 square. Therefore, their sum is 6.25 2.25 2.25 which is, is equal to 10.75. So, this is the observed value of the statistic m n. Now, what is the rejection criteria? We have already seen that if we are testing theta is greater than 1 as opposed to theta is equal to 1, then what we are checking is that x has a wider spread than y and in that case the critical value of is going to be if m n is greater than some critical value. So, in this case the test criterion is going to be that m n is greater than equal to some critical value. However, if the case would have been that theta is less than 1 that is x has a denser spread than y then m n had to be less than equal to some critical value. Since we are testing theta is greater than 1 we will look at if m n is greater than equal to some critical value. Now, tables are very rare for these tests. So, what we are doing? We are looking at a complete enumeration of all the possible permutations and for each one of them we will calculate the value of m n and then we will see what can be the probability of getting the value that we have obtained is equal to 10.75. So, we have 6 elements 3 x's and 3 y's there are 20 possible permutations. So, for each one of them we are computing the value of m n our values were x x y y x y that means that the first second and fifth observations were x observations and we obtained the value 10.75. Let me illustrate with some other say for example, this one x is occupying the positions 3 comma 4 comma 5. Therefore, the value of m n in this case 
is going to be 3 minus 3.5 that is 0 0.5 square plus 4 minus 3.5 that is another 0 0.5 square plus 5 minus 3.5 is equal to 1.5 square is equal to 0 0.25 plus 0 0.25 plus 2.25 which is equal to 2.75. So, this is a bit laborious, but we have done it for your sake and for these 10 permutations we have computed the value for another 10 permutations we have these values computed as I said it is laborious but since we are doing a complete enumeration we had to do it. Now, let us going to check what is the probability that m n is greater than equal to 10.75. In this page we are finding two of them on the previous page there are 1, 2, 3 and 4, 4 of them. Therefore, what we find is that 6 out of 20 cases we are having the value greater than equal to 10.75. Therefore, the p value is equal to 0 0.3. Therefore, we cannot reject the H naught at 5 percent or 10 percent level of significance. So, that is with respect to mood test. Note that the above test makes sense if it is established that x and y have the same median and the observations are mingled. What I mean by that? That x and y observations are mixed. Suppose that is not the case. For example, consider this case 1. We have x observations are 1, 5 and 9 and y observations are 13, 14 and 15. In the second case, our x observations are 1, 2, 3 and y observations are 7, 11 and 15. When we are computing the m n, what is going to happen? In both the cases, we are getting x, 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 y, y, y because the smallest three are x and the bigger three are y observations. So, for both the cases the mean rank is going to be n plus 1 by 2 as we have calculated. Both have the permutation x x x y y y. Hence, for both the cases the value of m n is coming out to be 8.75. This we have already seen in our table. But if we look at that, we can see that in the first case x has much wider spread, but in the second case y has much wider spread, but that we cannot detect using this test. This is because x and y are not at all mingled here. We have got the x observations on the left side and y observations on the right side. Now, for the same data we are going to apply the Freund and Sadi Bradley test. We already know the test statistic which is f n which is i is equal to 1 to floor of n plus 1 by 2 multiplied by i star z i plus i is equal to n plus 1 by 2 floor plus 1 to n n minus i plus 1 star z i where z i is the indicator variable for x. Therefore, for the given data n plus 1 by 2 is equal to 3.5 and therefore, floor of that is equal to 3. Therefore, f n is equal to when i is equal to 1, I am getting the value 1 an indicator variable z 1 is equal to 1. When i is equal to 2, I am getting 2, 
multiplied by the indicator variable which is again 1, but for i is equal to 3 the indicator variable is taking the value 0 because that is a y observation. Now, let us look at this part for 4, 5 and 6 when i is equal to 4 n minus i plus 1 is equal to 6 minus 4 plus 1 multiplied by 0 because z 4 is equal to 0. Similarly, 6 minus 5 plus 1 when i is equal to 5 multiplied by 1 because z 5 is 1 we know that the fifth observation in the sorted array is an x observation and for i is equal to 6 this is going to be 6. So, it is 6 minus 6 plus 1, but it is multiplied by 0. Therefore, what we are getting is that the value of f n is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. Again, we will go for a complete enumeration of permutations. We know that the rejection criteria is that x has a wider spread, which is our alternative if f n is smaller than some critical value. However, if x has a denser spread then our rejection criteria would have been that the value of f n is greater than some critical value, but since this is our case we are looking at f n is smaller than some critical value. So, what we do for all the 20 permutations we compute the value of f n. So, we have all those values. Therefore, probability f n is less than equal to 5. How many cases are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Therefore, again there are 6 cases out of 20 where the statistic is less than equal to 5. Therefore, the sample p value is 6 out by 20 which is equal to 0 0.3 and therefore, we cannot reject H naught because this is much larger than 0 0.05 or 0 0.1 which are the typical values for alpha. In a similar way one can use the David Barton test where the test statistic B n is equal to I is equal to 1 to n plus 1 by 2 floor of n plus 2 by 2 minus i multiplied by z i and plus i is equal to n plus 1 by 2 plus 1 to n i minus capital n plus 1 by 2 floor multiplied by z i. This we know. Now, for this case since capital n is equal to 6 n plus 1 by 2 is floor is 3 and n plus 2 by 2 its value is 4. Therefore, this sum we will take for 1 to 3 and this we will take for 4 to 6. Therefore, B n is going to be 4 minus i multiplied by z i plus i minus 3 multiplied by z i for 4 to 6 on this side and 1 to 3 for this side. Since we know that z i is equal to 1 for 1, 2 and 5 therefore, we are getting 4 minus 1 plus 4 minus 2 plus 5 minus 3 which is, is equal to 3 plus 2 plus 2 is equal to 7. Therefore, the computed value of the statistic B n for this data is 7. In a similar way one should calculate the value of B n for all the 20 permutations and one should test H naught the way we have done for the two earlier cases. I leave it as an exercise for you. It is laborious, but it gives insight into how data works. Let me now talk about another test which is called Sukhatme test. This test is less practiced as it can work only if the medians of both the populations are known. Therefore, it is very important. Why? Because the data will be transformed to x minus m x where m x is the median for x 
and y minus m y, so that they can spread on both the sides of 0. Therefore, if f x and m y are not known, truly we cannot use this, but typically what happens when the sample size is large, one can assume that the sample median is same as population median and therefore, we can use the sample median corresponding sample median from x and y and so that they become 0 centered and once they are like that, we can use Sukhatme test for testing of the difference in spread of x and y or if x and y have the same spread or not. So, without loss of generality, we assume that the observations will be adjusted so that both the populations have 0 median. The statistic t is defined on the following principle, y is said to be more dispersed than x. If in the combined sample for negative observations, x values are larger than the y values and for positive observations, x values are generally smaller than y values. That means, if we look at the diagram, values are spread on the negative side and positive side of 0, y is said to be more dispersed or a higher spread because the more outer values are y, but the central values are from x and we notice that for positive side x values are smaller than y, but on negative side x values are bigger than y. So, this Sukhathbe T statistic is computed as follows T is equal to sigma over i is equal to 1 to m, sigma over j is equal to 1 to n d i j, where d i j is equal to 1 upon m n and it is 1 if 0 less than x i less than y j or y j less than x i less than 0 and it is 0 otherwise. So, a deeper analysis suggests that it is counting the following. On the positive side, how many x values are less than y values? And on the negative side, how many y values are less than x values? So, together we can see that for both positive and negative cases, we are counting how many x values are less than each y value in magnitude. So, let me illustrate with one example. Consider the following data x is equal to minus 3, minus 1.5, minus 1, 0 0.5, 1.5 and 2.75 and y is equal to minus 5 minus 2 minus 0 0.5 and 1 3 4. So, these are on the negative side and these are on the positive side. When we pull them together and sort it, the arrangements look like this where red implies x and black implies y. So, looking at this, we can feel that y has more spread than x. So, let us compute the value of t. So, corresponding to each y value on the negative side, we are checking how many x values are greater than this. So, let me make a partition here. Now, if we consider minus 5, then minus 3, minus 1.5, minus 1, all three x values are greater than minus 5. Therefore, we get 1, 1, 1 here. For y is equal to minus 2, we find that minus 3 is less than this. Therefore, it is 0, but minus 1.5 and minus 1 are greater than this. Therefore, 
they get 1. With respect to minus 0 0.5, we find that all 3 are less than minus 0 0.5, therefore, they are getting 0. Now, let us come to the positive side. We now look at for each x, it is smaller than how many y's. So, for point 5, we find that it is smaller than 1, 3 and 4. So, for all 3 of them, we get positive values. For plus 1.5, it is smaller than only 3 and 4. So, we get 1 here and for plus 2.75, again it is smaller than both. So, they get plus 1 here. Therefore, there are 12 cases when we get 1. Therefore, as we have said, the value of t is this count divided by m n, where m is equal to 6 and n is equal to 6. Therefore, 12 by 36 is equal to 0 0.33. So, that is how the t statistic is computed. Now, the smallest value for m n times t that means, you are looking at the counting is 0 when the pooled sorted arrangement is something like this. All y values are at the center. Therefore, no x is less than y on the positive side and no x is greater than y for negative side. Therefore, the value of the count is equal to 0. So, in this case the data shows that x has more spread than y. Therefore, for lower values of t we can see that the x will have more spread than y. On the other hand, if we have an arrangement like this where all the x values are at the center, then we can see that we will get the maximum count for t, because all x values are less than each y value on the positive side and all x values are greater than each y value on the negative side. Therefore, greater value of t means x has a wider spread than y and smaller value of t means x has a denser spread than y. Therefore, what is going to be the rejection region? Suppose the alternative is theta greater than 1 that is x has a wider spread, then in that case we have seen that greater value of t means x has wider spread. Therefore, we expect the value of t should be big, but it need not be the maximum, it can be somewhat less, but if it is too small then we will have to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. Therefore, the critical value is going to be that t is less than some c alpha. In a very similar way, when x has a denser spread than y, then we know that the value should be small. Smaller value of t means x has a denser spread than y. It need not be 0, it can be little bit more, but if it crosses a threshold, then we are going to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. Therefore, t has to be greater than some critical value at alpha level, but for Sukhathme test also the tables are rare. So, we are not going to test the hypothesis the way we have done for others, but we limit ourselves to the computing of the t value for a sample data. However, when the number of sample is large that is n is equal to m plus n is large, then it can be computed that expected value of t is going to be 1 by 4 
and variance of t is going to be n plus 7 upon 48 m n. I am not going to calculate this, but what it suggests that therefore, for larger values of capital N t minus 1 by 4 upon square root of n plus 7 divided by 48 m n is going to be distributed as normal 0 y. Therefore, we can use normal table for acceptance or rejection. Okay, friends, I stop here today. In the next class, I shall prove some mathematical results involving linear rank statistics. Thank you.